I'm Sarah Roberts. I am someone who teaches other people to decorate sugar cookies. I know, it's a job. <laughs> I started out decorating cookies and then decided that it was, I loved it so much I wanted to share it with other people. Hey Sandy. And today we are talking about what to do when you're scared to start selling. Um, I hear people tell me this all the time. They say, I'm scared to start selling my cookies. I'm scared to start um, even trying to learn to decorate cookies because we have this fear of failure. Um, and I can definitely relate because I had that too when I started. So this is not going to be one of those videos where I say, don't be scared, just do it. <laughs> I'm going to give you some tips on how I overcame my own fear of failure and fear of starting and some resources that you can check out so that you can get past those blocks and move on to the fun part of cookie decorating. So whether you are learning to decorate cookies for your family, for fun, for profit, or for a side hustle, a full-fledged business, whatever you are learning for, I'm your girl, I'm here for you. I especially teach beginners, people getting started out. Um, that's what my Cookie Academy is for, and that is what my whole channel, Facebook, YouTube, all that's all about is teaching you to get started. So if you enjoy cookie decorating videos and information about decorating cookies, definitely follow my Facebook page, subscribe to my YouTube. Y'all know what to do. So let's get into it. While I am um, getting us shared in the Cookie Confidence Facebook group, I always like to make sure we're sharing this to Cookie Confidence. That's our free Facebook group where you can come and learn about cookie decorating and ask questions from ladies who are also getting started and aren't going to judge you or anything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give us a share there. And while I'm doing that, I would love it if y'all could comment and let me know what is your next step. Is your next step in your cookie decorating journey making your first set? Is it mastering a certain technique? Is it maybe getting up the courage to start that business or maybe hosting your first pop-up? Let me know what your next step's going to be. I'm excited to see. Alright, and we are sharing. Cookie Confidence. There we go. So if you're in Cookie Confidence and you want to watch this video there, it will be there for you to replay. But if you want to watch it here, it'll also be here and you can find it on YouTube as well. So we're getting that posted. And now I'm going back to where I can see my comments. Sandy said her next step is selling. She wants to, yes, next step is selling. I get you. That is one of the hardest steps to me. Like you go from the learning to the selling. That's like a big transition. But we're going to talk about how to make it less scary today. Liana says she just wants to sell locally. Yes, I only ever sold locally. I never sold um, online or anything. I know you can take it a little bit bigger and sell to um, a wider audience if you go online like places like Etsy. Um, I know a lot of cookie decorators do really well on Etsy, but I only ever sold locally and I was super happy with my local business, Liana. So I hope that's encouraging to you. All right, y'all. So I am, as I was planning out my video today, I was thinking back to about a year and a half ago when I decided, okay, I'm going to post these cookies on Facebook. And I had made my little Facebook business page. I had looked up YouTube videos on how to even make a Facebook video or Facebook business page and all that stuff. Because that was totally new to me. I thought like the IRS was going to come chase me down for a business license just because I clicked the business button on Facebook. Like y'all, I was scared of everything. I thought that I was going to get myself in some kind of trouble if I clicked the wrong button. Like... I was just a ball of nerves, <laughs> but that is one of those times when I did it, even though I was scared. Um, and so one of my biggest things that I was concerned about was what are people going to think? Are they going to think these cookies are ugly? Are they going to think, oh, poor little Sarah thinks these cookies are cute and bless her heart. They're just not. <laughs> Am I going to be talked about in circles on um, Sunday afternoons when families are gathering? Like that was something that was in my head very much. Um, and so something I want to encourage you about is 
to stop caring what others think so much. I think that's something that definitely comes with time and age. Um, but if you can stop worrying about what other people think, that frees you so much from the worry of getting started. I think so much of our worries when we're getting started with any kind of business is what are other people going to think? What is so-and-so going to think? Um, what is my um, neighbor who makes cookies going to think that I'm starting a cookie business? Does she think I'm mad at her and trying to take her business? Like, she doesn't. Um, <laughs> there's enough business for everybody. So, I think one of the biggest things to let go of is what other people think. And something that really helped me move past that was I heard someone say, um, I think it was on the radio, I was listening to like a podcast or something, and they said, what other people think of you has nothing to do with you. It's what's going on with them that makes them project onto you. So that was really helpful for me. And also, Miss um, Christy Wright that I talk about sometimes, she's one of my business people that I follow. If you're having some fear of starting, fear of failure, she's a great one to watch. You can watch her show for free on YouTube, and she also has like this um, program you can join, Business Boutique, that really helped me as well. So, that's my first tip. Stop caring what other people think. <laughs> that's hard. It takes a lot of work, but every time you hear a thought in your head, uh, the Bible says to take every thought captive. So when you hear that thought go on in your head that says, well, what's so-and-so going to think, or they're going to think this, take it captive, say, I'm not worried about what they think. You need to be so worried about, or so invested in making your life the happiest and the best that it can be and so grateful for all that you already have that you're not even worried about what other people are thinking so that's tip number one number two i think we all worry about what if i do all this work for nothing <laughs> like what if i pour all this time and energy into this thing and nothing comes of it and i'm just sitting here having wasted all this time nothing you do is for nothing um, everything that you're doing along this journey of building a cookie business or a hobby or anything is a learning experience and it's going to provide value to you at some point down the road. Um, so if you feel like this is not um, going to be profitable or you feel like this is a big risk, just know that even if the goal that you have in mind for it doesn't come to fruition, even if you don't um, make a whole lot of money or anything like try to keep those thoughts in your head think positive of course but you know reframe it as a learning experience um, so if you don't meet your sale goals or if if you don't make the cookies look like you want them to look it's not a failure it's notes for next time on how you're going to do it better and how you're going to improve so reframe your thinking there now stop thinking number three stop thinking that every mistake is a complete failure i used to fall into this all the time like i thought if i had a typo on my facebook page or i had something like a crumb in the picture or something like that you know or maybe there was a smear on my counter in the picture next to my cookie like things like that i would just agonize over and think about all day long and I felt like I had completely failed and I just as well give up on this cookie business because I can't keep my counters clean and if I can't keep my counters clean then what am I even doing? <laughs> like things like that used to really get to me but um, one time I was, this is kind of a related story but it was something that helped me overcome this way of thinking. I was singing at church. I attempt to sing sometimes at our little small church and one of the verses that I was singing I messed up the words it was very noticeable <laughs> I felt awful about it and as I was sitting down one of our church members that I really respect was like you did a great job and instead of taking the compliment like many of us do I kind of brushed it off I was like oh I messed up I didn't do it right I got these words wrong and he said well stop focusing on what you got wrong and think about the whole song that you sang well and so that really kind of flipped a switch in my brain and it's something I think about a lot. Um, it's funny that it was over singing and now I think about it a lot in business and in any kind of skill that I'm trying to develop. You need to focus on all that went well instead of things that might go wrong or have gone wrong or small mistakes that eat up your thoughts and the energy that could be used in creating and having fun and enjoying life. 
So that's number three. Stop thinking about your mistakes as failures. They're just mistakes. Everybody makes them. Move on. Go on with your life. It's fine. <laughs> number four, the food business can be really special, like especially scary because there are regulations. You have this worry in the back of your head of what if I get someone sick? You also have the whole like, well, am I eventually gonna open a storefront? Do you feel like you can only be legitimate if you have a storefront? Or that's how I felt anyway. I'm like, well, I'm just making food out of my kitchen. Like it's, is it really even a business? You know, you have all these thoughts running around about, um, you know, what if someone comes to pick up cookies and my floor hasn't been swept? Are they gonna think I'm dirty? Are they gonna go tell, a hundred people that Sarah Roberts house is covered in Cheeto crumbs and you shouldn't buy cookies from her, which by the way, it is. It's always covered in Cheeto crumbs. I have two, three year olds and <laughs> there's never a time when there's not a Cheeto crumb in the floor. I clean on Saturdays. I get it spotless and just so it can be messed up all week long. <laughs> but anyway, you have all these fears in the back of your head about like, is it good enough? Is my house clean enough? Is my kitchen clean enough? Will I be able to keep up with the dishes? Like, I think the food industry just carries a lot of fears and a lot of worries with it. But on the safety, food safety, getting people sick note, if you're having these concerns, if you're worried about that, you're gonna be careful. Like, obviously, we're not gonna feed someone something that is harmed in any way or dangerous. You know what to do when it comes to keeping food safe. Like you've read the little thing on the cottage food brochure by this point. So you know what to do. And it is really hard to get someone sick with a sugar cookie. Let me just tell you, um, sugar cookies are pretty non-perishable and they last four to six weeks in those little resealable bags. Um, they don't really get outdated very easily. So that's something that you can rest a little easier about because you know that it's going to be very hard if not impossible to get someone sick with a sugar cookie so ease your mind about that and then cottage food law and food regulations oh y'all if you've ever posted in a cookie group besides cookie confidence um <laughs> you know that there are some serious cottage food laws and cottage food law advocates out there, which as it should be, we need to keep people safe. We need to make sure we're abiding by those cottage food laws. But sometimes we can make each other a little scared by sharing all those horror stories and those awful experiences. Cottage food laws, food regulations in your city, town, state, county, whatever, they are figure outable just like any other skill in life. They are figure outable just like any other situation. I'm quoting Marie Forleo here if you want to read her book. Everything is figure outable. Cottage food laws, business regulations in your state, county, whatever, it's all figure outable. There is someone you can call, there is a website you can go to, there is a PDF you can read, there is a video you can watch somewhere out there that will help you get the hang of these cottage food laws. And if you make a mistake, they're not going to come to your house and take away your pink KitchenAid. They're going to maybe issue you a warning or you're going to get corrected. And I mean, I've heard the horror stories of people getting fined, but just do the best you can to follow them. Call your local representative of your health department and say, where can I find these cottage food laws? They'll tell you where to find them. Go read them. Do your due diligence and then stop worrying about it. Don't let it stress you out. Don't let it keep you up at night because I think a lot of times we let ourselves get really, really scared or really worried about the cottage food law side of things. And although it is important, yes, <laughs> it is very important and it's a huge thing that you need to pay attention to. It's not something that you should let keep you up at night and not something that you should be scared of because you can overcome the not knowing. You can call someone and find out. Just feel empowered, get on the phone one day and say, hey, what are my next steps? And then move on. Okay, number five, think of all the things that you might be missing out if you don't start. So whether this is if you don't start selling, if you don't bring it to that, bring your cookies to that family get together, or um, whether you don't try making that first set, think of all the things you could be doing if you did. There are so many people whose lives you could bless. There are so many good situations that you can create. 
Um, so just think on all those good things. It's like the Bible says. I know I've referenced the Bible a lot in this video, but y'all, it's helpful. So <laughs> it's like it says, just think on the good things. Stop thinking about all the bad junk. Think on the good. So I know this has been a lot about like your thought process and how you think and feel about things. But I hope it's been really helpful to help you kind of overcome your fear of starting and get to your next steps, whether that's selling, whether that is starting to learn, whether that's picking up a scribe for the first time or taking a set of cookies to a church potluck for the first time. Um, whatever it is, I hope this helps you get to that next point. Um, let's read over some of our comments right quick. Wendy says, my next steps are also learning to photograph and stage my photos. I need help. You need, um, well, it's closed right now. Shoot. The cookie, sugar cookie marketing Facebook group is a really good one for that. If you're not in the Facebook group, you can follow them on Instagram and they have lots of good photo staging ideas. Um, I have got the hang of it enough to the point that I feel like I could make a YouTube video on it, but I want to go on and give you a resource you can use right now, and I'll put that on my list to make a video about um, Wendy. I will make sure that we get a video made. Um, the main things are just natural light, kind of set your cookies next to a window so they look pretty, and um, think about the rule of thirds. So think about your picture in terms of two thirds or three thirds this way, three thirds this way. Y'all notice that my face is in the middle third of the picture. That's what you want to do with your cookies. Think about the little thirds and put it in natural light. Those are the main things. And again, sugar cookie marketing is a really good one to research that. And we also have, let's see, Wendy said she's started dabbling in selling. She's made about 12 sets. Now that's great. She's about 12 months, oh, two months. Sorry, excuse me two months into her cookie journey and just continuing to practice decorating yeah i would say that i was um at least six months into selling <laughs> before i really felt like okay i've got this decorating thing down pat like i can decorate a set and feel good about it um and even toward the end of taking orders even though i no longer take orders anymore like Toward the end, even in my last few custom orders, there were still cookies that I was like, mm, you know. <laughs> but it takes a while to get that cookie confidence going, and you'll get there. It's Your cookies are already beautiful. I'm pretty sure I've seen them in the group, and they're gorgeous. Um, let's see. Next step, selling. Selling locally. I'm so excited for y'all to start selling. Next month, I'm planning on doing a cookie business video part two. Um, there's part one up on my YouTube right now, but it kind of cuts off in the middle of it and I'm just going to refilm, start from scratch and do like a part two updated version of that. Um, so, there will be a cookie business video coming soon if you're wanting to start your business. I'm not a business guru by any means, but I will tell you what helped me when it came to starting my cookie business. Oh, let's see, Liana says I have a hard time getting people interested because they want more and more examples of my work. So, I've been thinking about making them for my students. Yeah, um, I think it's fine to do some practice sets to kind of get your gallery built up. Um, <laughs> they will be honest, yes. <laughs> Kids are always honest. Don't you love that about them? Um, my little boy likes to mush on my belly, like, all day, every day, and he'll go mush, 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 and oh, thanks so much. That's great for the confidence. Total tangent, but anyway. Um, so, <laughs> getting people interested with examples. I think that's just something that definitely takes time. As you do more and more sets, you'll get more and more examples. But definitely take advantage of the holidays because you can make practice sets slash example sets like if we've got teacher, teacher appreciation coming up. So one of the tips I give in the YouTube video that's already up um, that I'll kind of expand on in the new one is to pick a holiday that's coming up and make a set to go with that holiday and then do a giveaway. So that lets you practice your new skills, lets you add to your gallery of work that you can show people when they're wanting examples 
and it lets you increase your social media reach. So if you do a giveaway with like, share, tag, or um, anything like that, um, that's going to get your social media reach out there and let more people know about you and your business. And you can also say, <laughs> oh, genius, thank you so much. I appreciate that. The giveaways are how I grew my Facebook page locally and how I started getting cookie orders. Giveaways are the bee's knees. They really do help you so much. And then after you do that giveaway and everyone's wanting a set of those cookies that you gave away, but only one person is given the free set, then you can say, oh, well, there was such a great demand for these. I'm going to do a pre-sale. And then you come in and say, these are this much, these are this much, these are this much. And you start getting orders. Then those people will become repeat customers once they taste your delicious cookies. And it'll all be gravy from there. <laughs> I didn't say it would be easy. I said it would be gravy. <laughs> gravy is good and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes hard, but very good. You'll start getting orders that way, though, with the giveaways and the pre-sales. And then if you don't sell any, if you just post them and say, they message me to order, if you don't sell any, no love lost, um, you've got new pictures to add to your gallery. So I hope that's helpful. y'all I hope this was really helpful for y'all I feel like we got into a lot of different topics today and um, I'm fine with that I just want to help y'all I have so many people tell me I just need help with everything I need help with the whole cookie process and that's what I want to be for you um, especially the skills the learning at the beginning but um, if you want to start a business if you want to start doing those pre-sales I want to be helpful there too so if y'all have any questions you can message me you can send me an email uh, make sure that you're subscribed to the Weekly Bite newsletter. You can do that on my website, saragracecookieco.com. Um, that's where I send out all the updates about what videos posted this week, about um, new things that are coming up, um, things like that. Um, we'll have our Mother's Day cookie workshop tomorrow night. It's the Cookie Bouquet Workshop. I'm really excited about that. We had a little snafu with the uh, course hosting platform. Uh, well, it wasn't their fault. It was mine. I uploaded the video and it only uploaded like 27 seconds of it. So if you've been looking at the icing mixing video that shows you how to get the right consistencies and colors for that workshop tomorrow night and you only got like half a second of the green color, you can log back in. <laughs> it's good to go now. I just wanted to get that out there for anyone who didn't see the email today. Um, that's good to go and you can go watch that anytime. <laughs> All right, thank you all for joining me today. Y'all have an awesome week. Bye-bye.